How realistic are your dinosaurs? Welcome to the Natural History of Dinosaurs. My name is Benjamin Berger. I'm a paleontologist at Utah State University teaching in the heart of Utah's dinosaur country in Vernal. In this video we will look at the evolution of dinosaur art and the way dinosaurs have been portrayed from the first reconstructions at the Crystal Palace exhibition in London in, back in 1854 to the latest computer games and movies. The first dinosaur reconstruction was undertaken by Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins who had very little to go on in reconstructing the very first dinosaur back in 1854. Now at the time dinosaurs were seen as closely related to living lizards particularly iguana lizards and based on the teeth that had been found. Now Hawkins traveled later on to the United States and by the 1870s new discoveries in New Jersey and in Belgium showed that this 1854 reconstruction was completely wrong and he set about reconstructing the dinosaurs in their more familiar bipedal pose with the reconstruction of Hadrosaurus and Iguanodon. Artwork during the 1870s and 1880s in the reconstruction of dinosaurs was more fantasy than fact and many of the dinosaurs were not complete enough to get a good idea of how they may have lived. Now one person changed all of this. Charles R. Knight. Charles Knight was a local artist working in New York City when the American Museum was growing its collection of dinosaurs from both Edward Drinker Cope's collection and the new expeditions that were being led out west. Knight had been busy illustrating magazines and books and he had become really skilled at drawing lifelike illustrations of animals. He was commissioned by the American Museum to reconstruct many of the dinosaurs which were being found in the western part of the United States at the time. His first dinosaur painting I regard as one of the best dinosaur reconstructions ever made. In 1897 he painted two Laelaps. These are dinosaurs now referred to as Dryloptosaurus, attacking or playing with each other. Now the painting is expressionistic and it was painted skillfully with rushed brush strokes to capture the movement of the two dinosaurs at play. His artwork drew crowds to the museum and Knight continued to paint murals and artwork for the museum until his death. His dinosaur art during the 1890s was the first to view these creatures beyond just their fossilized bones. He reconstructed Stegosaurus and Brontosaurus and he drew the first reconstructions of the sauropod dinosaurs using their long necks underwater. Knight used his skill at drawing modern animals in his reconstructions of dinosaurs and made them lifelike and real not the strange, weird, grotesque monsters that was in fashion before. The next great artist of dinosaurs was working across the Hudson River at the Peabody Museum, home to the O.C. Marsh collection of dinosaurs. His name was Rudolf Franz Zinglinger. Now Zingler was born in Siberia but moved to the United States as a child and was a student at Yale University as an artist in the 1940s and he got a job as a student to paint algae for the museum director who he then convinced to allow him to draw to paint a large mural of dinosaurs for the museum. Between 1943 and 1947 he threw himself at painting a great masterpiece in the museum. The mural depicted the age of reptiles sweeping across from the Triassic all the way into the Cretaceous. 
The painting won the Pulitzer Prize for painting in 1949 and still is the masterpiece of the museum exhibit at Yale University. Looking at the dinosaurs depicted by Zinglinger, we see that they are more rounded with large sauropod nestled down into the water. This is similar to the depictions that we saw previously by Charles Knight. And the Tronosaurus with the very upright pose and dragging a tail. The painting invokes the primeval world of the Mesozoic, but none of the dinosaurs are feathered and they look rather like many of the cheap dinosaur toys that would fill toy stores in the 1950s and 1960s. This mural would inspire many paleontologists who visited the museum, but it lacks some of the realism of what is to come. Paintings were not the only form of dinosaur artistry during this time. The world of dinosaurs was brought to the silver screen through animated dinosaurs in some of the very first silent movies. One of the pioneers of bringing stop-action animated dinosaurs to life was Ray Harryhausen. Now Harryhausen took the dinosaurs depicted by Knight and Zinglinger and he brought them to life using clay and model sets built at first in his home and then working with some of the major movie studios. Harryhausen wowed audiences in the 1950s and 1960s in seeing moving dinosaurs interacting with people and places that were, well, far from scientific, but entertaining. His movies would inspire many of the computer animated movies of dinosaurs that we have today. Dinosaur art was revolutionized during the 1980s up to today with the dinosaur renaissance. This is a new science of dinosaurs that thought of dinosaurs as active and agile animals that had been successful for millions of years on Earth. I think you can categorize new dinosaur art under three major stylistic differences from the older art. First is the use of color. Second is the use of correct anatomical poses, such as getting rid of dragging the tails. And third, the introduction and embracement of feathers on dinosaurs. Now there are so many dinosaur artists working out there today, many of which got their start during the 1980s, and there are some new starts that are revolutionizing the way we view dinosaurs. I'm going to list 10 10 of my favorite dinosaur artists or artists that are doing something really kind of unique or special. I wish it could be more than 10, but these artists I think give a good sampling of the range of dinosaur art from the 1980s to the present day. Mark Hallett. Hallett's work is likely familiar as he came onto the scene during the 1980s and I love the colors and contrast of his work. The dinosaurs are dynamic and alive. James Gurney. Gurney is a amazing artist who also happens to paint dinosaurs. His best known work is his fantasy series, Dinotopia, where humans and dinosaurs live together. Gurney is extremely talented in his use of light and color and his ability to add dinosaurs to imagined worlds. Gurney follows in Charles Knight's tradition in using models to set the lighting of his dinosaurs before painting them and using models to help compose the finished art piece. Lou Ray. 
Lou Ray uses color like no other artist out there with in-your-face dinosaurs with bright, vivid colors. Ray was one of the first artists to embrace feathers in his reconstructions. And his artwork is amazing, especially his depictions of oviraptors. Many of his paintings use foreshortening to give a 3D feel to the dinosaur. And it makes it feel as if you are uncomfortably close to the dinosaur. Douglas Henderson. Douglas Henderson is an amazing landscape artist who weaves dinosaurs into visual wonderlands of past worlds. His work often does not heighten the sense of a dinosaur's scale, but dwarfs the dinosaur in, a, in the landscapes that they lived in. This beauty of the landscape brings out the strangeness of the actual existence of dinosaurs so much that we can imagine ourselves back in the Mesozoic. Julius Castatoni. Julius Castatoni is a scientifically trained artist who switches between watercolor and pastels to digital illustrations. His art uses backlighting to highlight the dinosaurs he depicts, as well as place the animals in a cinematic pose. He has illustrated many books and museum exhibits. Dougal Dixon. Dougal Dixon is unique on this list. And that's because he's created hypothetical dinosaurs, imagining what they could have evolved into if the asteroid had never crashed into the Earth. His dinosaur art is beautifully simple, which makes him like dinosaurs found in a field guide, which is something I just adore. John Gurchy. John Gurchy is best known for his early human artwork, but has captured a number of dinosaurs in action for his artwork on the Mesozoic creatures. His artwork is found in many places, often on covers of books and magazines. Emily Willogaby. Emily Willogaby is an artist who has embraced feather dinosaurs like no other artist has. Her artwork imagines fully feathered dinosaurs, which on first glance, they look like birds, but are in fact dinosaurs reimagined by her. The science supports a view of dinosaurs like the ones that Will Loganby has illustrated. Michael Sharepnik. Wide angle views of dinosaurs as you would see if they were captured with a GoPro camera. The artwork of Sharepnik is beautiful as well as realistic. Simple colors, but illustrating the realism of dinosaurs. His artwork is really compelling. Mick Ellison. Mick Ellison's artwork often accompanies scientific papers as he works at the American Museum as a resident artist. What I love about his dinosaurs is the care put into them to be as true as possible to the fossils that they come from. Each image is perfectly matched to what we see in the actual fossils. I've listed in the description the web pages of each of these artists so you can view more of their artwork and how they make their art. There are lots of other artists out there reimagining the world of dinosaurs. If I had a whole hour, I would not be able to go through the number of artists that have added their art to the field of science. I just wanted to highlight these artists because through their art you can see how much different the view of dinosaurs are today from the early reconstructions of Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins. Just like there are a million ways to illustrate dogs today, there are an equal number of ways to reconstruct a dinosaur. So what makes these artworks more realistic? Well, they all adhere to the fossilized bones themselves. That is, that they're to the same scale as the fossilized bones, they use models to help pose the dinosaur, and they often add muscles and the right attachment points on the model. And they're not afraid to incorporate new discoveries such as feathers 
or a more bird-like appearance when the science supports such a look. They can quickly illustrate living animals as much as extinct ones and use this skill to make better illustrations of the extinct animals. Really, we don't know the colors of dinosaurs or how dynamic they may have been. Plus, each artist brings their own artistic style to their work, which makes dinosaur artwork a beautiful marriage between science and art. The truth is, we will never know exactly how close we are to recreating dinosaurs. But the more bones that are found, the more technology advances, there's going to be a point where we are narrowing down on a remarkably new vision of very realistic dinosaurs. Each artist must adhere to the dimensions of the bone, the tendons and muscle attachments, but beyond that, it's really up to the artist to fill in the blanks. Now, one of the things that I see in new video games and in movies are more crocodilian or more reptilian dinosaurs than you're finding in the scientific illustrations, which view dinosaurs as more bird-like. So in movies like the 2015 Jurassic World used a older sort of retro look for the dinosaurs. And the upcoming art computer game, we see that dinosaurs are almost resemble dragons in scales. And I think this is because we have a more profound fear of reptiles, such as snakes and lizards, than we do of birds. And I think these human psychological predispositions forces video game and movie designers to what is entertaining to human audiences, and that is to make dinosaurs appear more reptilian and larger than life to scare the audience into purchasing tickets or buying the video game. There was never a dinosaur as large as Godzilla, but look at the success of those movies. All right, illustrate how our concept of dinosaurs has changed from the Crystal Palace exhibit in 1854 to modern images of dinosaurs that we see today.